Welcome to today's episode of How To With Paul. Today, we will be taking my 1957 Chevy Bel Air and we will be installing the Petronix Igniter 2 ignition module along with the Petronix Flamethrower 2 coil. We're gonna show you how to remove the distributor. We'll be showing you how to install the Igniter 2 and then we'll be showing you how to reinstall the distributor and time your vehicle correctly. Stay tuned. We are going to be taking my 1957 Chevy with a factory ignition, still has points, factory distributor. Most of the parts on this car are factory, which some people are gonna point out right away that the brakes are not factory. And that is because it had an original treadle vac system, which if you know anything about Chevy and you know anything about the Tri-5s, the treadle vac system was not a reliable brake system. So because I drive this car, I didn't feel like putting it in the back of a semi truck because the brakes didn't work. So I have built my own brake system to work bolt in with this car. So nothing's been cut up, nothing's been hacked up. Um, this is what I have done to make the car drivable and safe. So moving on from that, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be taking out the factory distributor. I'm gonna keep the factory distributor because I wanna keep things as factory as possible. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take the points out and we're gonna convert it to an electronic ignition. We're gonna be using the Petronix Igniter 2 electronical ignition. This is a fairly simple system. You take the points out, you put this system in place. Um, it takes away some of the slop that I have in my distributor and the misfires that I'm getting from the distributor slop uh, because I, the distributor is 63 years old and my only other option would be to buy a new aftermarket one or give this a shot. I'm thinking that this will take care of 99% of my problem. She's not a hot rod. She just runs solid. And I just want to keep her running solid. Um, I do ride, drive it a lot. So I just want it to be reliable. So we're going to be installing this. So we're going to set that off to the side. Um, the easiest way to do this and it, per the instructions, and I highly suggest that you do follow the instructions, it is to remove the distributor from the engine. Um, in order to do so, we're gonna cover a few things here um, in order to do that. Pretty basic, uh, Chevy has been very nice about how the distributor goes in. It's pretty simple, pretty easy, but in case you don't know, we're gonna be covering it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. We're gonna start with removing the air cleaner, which is, Fairly simple, take off the nut. We're gonna go ahead and pull the entire air cleaner. It is an original air bath, oil bath system. So I'll be putting that off to the side. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna be doing, hi, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the coil and get the coil just out of my way. Um, just to give myself a little bit more room to work back here and not to fight with the wires and have things in the way. I'm just gonna remove the coil. I have already done the liberty of loosening the bolts with a wrench. Normally these would be tightened with a wrench, but I left it loose so I can get it off easily and show for the video. So I will be removing those terminals. Those two terminals are now removed. I'm also gonna go ahead and remove the wiring from the temperature sensor, oil sensor, just to keep them out of the way and nothing gets broken. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pull off the coil wire, okay? And we're gonna remove the coil. Like I said, I already removed the bolt that was holding that down. So this is just gonna slide right out for me. And I'm just gonna set it off to the side somewhere where it won't fall and keep it out of our way. Um, one thing that's gonna be a little harder for you to see here is that the bolt that holds the distributor in, hopefully you can see, my hands are out of the way. There is a bolt that comes down here that tightens down the bracket, which keeps the distributor from moving and also keeps the distributor in place. We're gonna loosen that bolt up and we're also gonna remove this vacuum advance hose. So we're gonna pull that off just to get it out of the way. And we're gonna loosen this up, which they make a special tool for. You can get it with a wrench. I've always gotten it with a wrench. Works just fine for me. I crack it loose and I just set it, set the wrench back to the side. Um, you will notice that the distributor is loose. One of the things you might wanna take note of is its general position. You will have to retime the car, obviously, but you kinda of wanna have a good starting point and you can see that my trap door to the points is facing towards the carburetor pretty much, pretty much straight on. Makes it very simple to see where to start when I put it back together. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the distributor cap. In doing so, you've got these screws that come back here in the back. They are, you've gotta push them down and you turn them about a half a turn, you'll see that it pops up. You do that to both sides. Okay, that pops up. And then the distributor cap should just pop straight off. 
which it does. Now I'm just going to move some of the wires out of the way just to, so I can get everything out of the way and try to make things as easy for the camera to see as possible. Otherwise, I would probably just leave this off to the side and not worry about it too much. But because I'm trying to give you a good camera angle, I'm going to fight with this a little bit more and try to pull it out of the way. Um, being careful not to disrupt your spark plug wires so you don't have to deal with your firing order. If you disconnect any of these wires, you do want to pay attention to where they are because they will have to go back in the same place. Otherwise, your firing order will be messed up. And if that's the case, no big deal, but you just have to go through the procedure to go ahead and put the firing order back in. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reach down. I'm going to take out the rest of that bolt. I'm going to show you what that looks like along with the plate that holds it down. This is the plate that holds the distributor in place and the bolt that was holding it in. So now simply the distributor paying attention to also where this rotor position is. Now it, out, it happens to be pointing in a pretty, pretty good direction. I'm going to move it just a little bit by spinning the fan just to put it a little better straight across. And I'm just going to take a note and remember that that's the way it's going to go back in when I put this distributor back in. So quite simply, you're just gonna give the distributor a little bit of a twist and a tug, and the whole distributor should slide straight up. That's it, your distributor is now out. Uh, I will do a separate video where we will be doing this on the bench um, so that we can remove the points, which you can see are here. We'll be removing those and we'll be installing the igniter too. Uh, stay tuned.